Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll discuss about one more important concept in DBMS that is a normalization. So this is a very important concept and before watching this video, so just please visit our previous videos about the functional dependency concept because so if you know that functional dependency concept, it would be very easy for you to understand this normalization process. So in the previous sessions, we have discussed about the functional dependency and the types of functional dependencies, the attribute closures and how to find the candidate key and super keys using the functional dependencies. So I'll post the link in the description, the playlist link in the description. So just go through that one. And after that, you can watch this normalization concept. Definitely, it will be very easy for you to understand this one. Now, uh, first, let us know what exactly this normalization, right? So this normalization is a single term. So we can say it is a single term that is optimizing, optimizing relations. Optimizing the relations. So here the relation means table. Table, right? So optimizing the relations means so just we are optimizing the tables. Optimizing the tables. So why we are optimizing these tables? Right? So in order to avoid the redundancy. Avoid the redundancy. So why? Why we are moving towards this normalization, right? So there are some drawbacks in our uh, table schema structure. So we can avoid that drawbacks. So what are the drawbacks means? The first one, avoid the redundancy. So the table may consist of a redundancy. That means a duplicating, duplication of data. So we, we have to remove the duplication of data. At the same time, we have studied about the anomalies. Anomalies, right? Insert anomaly, delete anomaly, and update anomaly. So these are the flaws, flaws in the table schema. So we have to avoid these anomalies. Okay. So in order to avoid the redundancy and anomalies, so one solution, one solution is to op optimize, optimize the tables, optimize the tables or relations. So how we can optimize? This optimization can be done with decomposition. Decomposition. So the table can be decomposed into subtables. So relation will be decomposed into subrelations. Subrelations. Right? And this process is known as a normalization. This process is known as a normalization. And this process will be done in different phases. In different phases. So the first one, one NF, which we call it as a first normal form, first normal form. And the next one, two NF, which is a second normal form, second normal form. So how we can achieve that relation into this first normal form and second normal form, we'll see later. So the next one is a three NF. Third normal form and if next one is a BCNF. Voice code normal form. The next one is four NF, which is a fourth normal form. And last one is a 5NF, which is a fifth normal form. Fifth normal form. So, by using all these things, we can achieve the normalization. We can achieve the normalization. Right? So, 1NF, 2NF, 3NF, BCNF, 4NF and 5NF. So if you achieve 
up to bcn we can say the schema the schema is good or we can say the database is a good design the database is a good design right so if you want to know whether the relation is in 2nf the automatically the relation should be in 1nf then only we have to go with the 2nf so if you want to check whether the relation is in 3nf first it should satisfy the 2nf then only it, it should be in 3nf and if you if you the relation is in bcnf that that implies the relation satisfies the 3nf right so what i mean elaborate this one so how the relation can be in a first nf 1nf how the relation can be in 2nf how the relation can be in 3nf bcnf 4nf and 5nf so let us see the introduction and we will elaborate each and every normal form in our next sessions so initially let us assume that it's so unnormalized data unnormalized data so unnormalized data means a single table consists of all the attributes only one table with all other attributes so this will be coming to the 1nf 1nf only after removing repeating groups repeating groups so if in the table if any one of the attribute is having a multiple values so then we have to remove all those repeating values okay so after that after uh, removing all the repeating groups this unnormalized da data will be in 1nf will be in 1nf so if our relation doesn't have any repeating groups then simply we can say the relation is in 1nf and coming to the 2nf 2nf so after 1nf so we need to find the partial functional dependency so in the types of functional dependencies we have discussed about the fully functional dependency and the partial for functional dependency so we have to identify the partial functional dependencies are available or not if so we have to remove those partial functional dependencies so remove partial dependency so after removing the partial dependency we can say the relation is in 2nf right and before removing the partial dependency first the relation should be in 1nf then only we have to remove the partial dependency then only the relation will be in 2nf and after that 3nf so once the relation is in 2nf so we can check for the condition of 3nf right so without the relation is in 2nf we can't go for the 3nf so first the relation should be in 2nf then only we have to check for 3nf so after 2nf there will be no repeating groups there will be no partial dependencies right and next here we need to find the whether there are any transitive dependencies or not so in the previous uh, sessions in the functional dependencies we have seen about the trivial non trivial and functional uh, transitive transitive dependencies so here we need to find whether there are any transitive relationship that means transitive dependencies so if so we have to remove those transitive dependencies then only the relation will be in 3n so identify and remove remove transitive dependency remove transitive dependency once you remove the transitive dependency automatically the data the relation will be in 3nf so after that bcnf bcnf so uh, once if you want to check this bcnf make sure that the relation is in 3nf so otherwise we have, we should not go for the bcnf so if the relation is not in 3nf check for the 2nf so if the, if the relation is not in 2nf check for 1nf right so because for checking for 2nf the relation should be in 1nf the relation should be in 1nf then only we have to check for 2nf so in order to check 3nf the relation should be in 2nf if in order to check for bcnf the relation should be in 3nf 
and here so if you want if you want to check for bcnf make sure that the dependencies there are no repeating groups in our attributes there are no partial dependencies in our functional dependency there are no transitive dependencies in our functional dependencies and here make sure that make sure determinants determinants are candidate key dependent determinants are candidate keys determinants means the lhs lhs in functional dependency okay lhs in functional dependency for example uh, if the functional dependency is extends to y so this is the determinant and this will be the dependent right so this lhs should be a candidate key make sure the determinants are a candidate keys right so once it was done the relation is in bcnf so if the relation is in bcnf we can tell that the database design is a good design okay so after that still there will be a chance of having the redundancy even though the database design is good and the relation is in bcnf there might be a chance that a table consists of the relation consists of a redundancy okay so still we have we can normalize it so that is a 4 nf 4 nf so here we need to find whether the functional dependencies are having any multi value dependencies that is also one type of functional dependency so is there are any functional multi value dependencies are there so if so we have to remove those multi value dependencies so remove multi valued dependency multi valued dependencies okay okay so after removing the multi valued dependencies we can say that the relation is in 4nf so if the relation is 4nf definitely the relation will be in bcnf if the relation is bcnf we can say the relation is in 3nf right so 4nf afterwards the next one is 5nf the fifth normal form so we need to identify the joint dependencies is there are any joint dependencies so if so we have to remove the joint dependencies so here remove all the joint dependencies joint dependencies after removing the joint dependencies we can say the relation is in 5nf 5nf fifth normal form fifth normal form right so this is the process of normalization so first we have to consider the unnormalized data okay so in that we have to identify and we have to remove all the repeating groups so that it will be converted into i mean it satisfies the 1nf uh, uh, one and of a normal form the first normal form and from that we have to remove the partial dependencies so that it will be in 2nf and after that we have to remove the transitive dependencies so that it will be in 3nf and make sure that determinants are candidate keys so it will be in bcnf so bcnf is somewhat strong than the 3nf right both are almost similar but it is somewhat strong for bcnf so if any relation satisfies up to the bcnf we can say the database design is a good design okay still there might be a chance of uh, having the redundancy so we moving to the 4nf and 5nf by removing the multi value dependencies and removing the joint dependencies right and once again i'm repeating this normalization process is mainly used to optimize the table table schema okay the structure of a table right so why we are moving why we are optimizing means there might be a chance of having the redundancy and the anomalies so in the previous session we have discussed about the uh anomalies so insertion anomaly updation anomaly and deletion anomaly so those are the flaws okay flaws in the ta table design relation design so we in order to avoid those two things that means a redundancy that means a duplicate data as well as the anomalies problem so we are moving towards the normalization it will be uh done in the different phases that is a 1nf 2nf 3nf bcnf and 4nf and 5nf so in our next session we will start with the 1nf 
right so we will we'll go in detail individually from the next sessions so hope you understood this one so once again i am saying so just go through the previous sessions the topics of functional dependency the types of functional dependency axioms and uh, finding the candidate key and super keys using the functional dependencies so i'll post the playlist link in the description so go through that afterwards just visit this normalization process so that it will be very easy for you to understand this normalization process because all these are the different types of dependencies only right so let's stop here so if you are having any doubts regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much